I'm Meredith with XT, and today we are talking with Josh about his 1995 YJ. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for joining with me today. Glad to be here, thanks. Of course, so let's get into a brief overview of your build. So again, you have the 1995 YJ Rio Grande. You have the 15 by seven inch US Racing Stealth Crawler steel wheels with a positive six millimeter offset. 33 by 11 inch Cooper Discoverer MTP tires, and then the two and a half inch Rough Country lift kit with the Rubicon Express shocks. Can you tell me a little bit about why you chose this setup? So I went with this one. I'd been shopping for a Jeep for a long time, and I'm, I'm, I'm a uh, retired Army guy. I did 26 years and traveled all around the world and never had the time and the money to just sit down. It's like, I want a Jeep. I've always wanted one. And so I was approaching retirement and I found this one on the back of a dealership didn't run they uh, i got a great deal on it they say you know it's you know give me this much and you can haul it home after about a year new wheels and, and everything was on there i brought it out started giving it a good shakedown and it's, it's been a solid runner ever since uh now do you do any off-roading at all i would imagine so with the setup that you're working with i do actually so land between the lakes is, is a major park that's here it's on the Kentucky Tennessee border and they've got a huge area for off-roading and we go out there all the time. The, the beginner trails, the medium trails, the ones like you said for the bigger Jeeps, the newer ones with all the long travel suspension. I'm still leaf spring, so I'm not I'm not all about that life just yet. But it's it's been a great ride. It, it hasn't let me down yet. I've had no major breakdowns on the trails. I've uh, winched myself out of a couple tight spots, but that's why that, you know that's why it's there and that's why I bought it. So getting into some details here, starting off with the wheels. Again, for everybody watching at home, Josh has the 15 by 7 inch US Racing Stealth Crawler steel wheels with a positive six millimeter offset. Can you tell me why you chose these wheels specifically? I went to a few different Jeep meetups and met a lot of people once I, once I bought it and got big into the community. I saw a lot of nice rims out there, a lot of nice wheels. Um, I've had no complaints with it. The offset was a little bit uh, more than I'd anticipated. Uh, put a spacer on the inside with some uh, some Loctite and the right amount of torque. They were great all the way around. And why did you go with a, a 15 inch wheel in comparison to maybe uh, a larger wheel like a 16? I'm still running the 2.5 liter engine and I was like, I have less power. I don't want to waste it just trying to move a bigger wheel. And then uh, again, it also gives me a little bit of room to air down, have a little bit bigger footprint in the wintertime in the snow, get out there in the loose gravel, in the mud. It, it, it can provide me a bigger footprint for moving around. So I would say that you are happy with that wheel to sidewall ratio with the 15 and the 33? Absolutely. And plus, it looks good. So I would assume you went with a steel wheel for the durability and kind of your application when it comes to off-roading and, and wanting it to hold up. Absolutely, I didn't want to find myself broken down with a lighter weight wheel. If I find myself banging into something harder than I should, I didn't want to find myself just stuck because of a broken wheel. It made more sense to me, build it solid, build it strong, and then it'll, it'll perform as such. And then why did you go with a, a black setup compared to something like a, a polished wheel, especially because you're working with the 19 a lot of the time the polished look is very um, popular. Why didn't you go with a black wheel? I wanted something that just stood out a little bit. It's um, I actually borrowed a, a wheel off a friend of mine and brought it home and, and stuck it on the front end. I had polished ones before when I originally bought it and I, I had them and I, I said, so the, the polish was there. Then I borrowed a black one. I like I just liked it better. Personal preference. Uh, well, let's hop into tires. So again, just as a reminder for everybody watching at home, um, you have the 33 by 11 inch Cooper Discoverer MTP tires. Um, why did you go with this tire? So again, it was, uh, I borrowed it from a friend of mine. Uh, she had 33s. I wasn't sure if it was gonna fit and it did. And I was like, okay, I, li I like the size. And so I, I looked around different styles and I got online and, and found this time, had a lot of good reviews, had a lot of good reviews, especially when it was both on highway as well as off road. When you when you air down, uh, you want something that's gonna hang on if provided it's not a beat lock, it's not a, you know a, a, a rock crawling tire, just something to give a little bit better performance when you need it. And I, I, I read a bunch of good reviews on these. They're bigger, they're beefier, they, they flex out just a little bit more. They've got a great grab and I have yet to have a problem with them. And then why did you go with the brand? I would assume it was the influence of your friend that kind of had those as well? It was, and she, and she said she, she liked them a lot. She and her husband uh, ran them on all three of their Jeeps. And I was like, you know what? Let me look into this one. And that was just, that was the beginning of the digging into, you know, the quality of the, you know the manufacturer. What are the faults? What are the deficiencies? What are the good things? What are the bad? So I, I, I weighed them out evenly, and it, it came out more on the pro side than the con side. And I was like, that's what I'm going with. And had them ordered them, and they showed up right here on my driveway 
about a week later. That's perfect. And I assume the sizing is on the same page. Can you tell me a little bit more about why you went with the 33? I know you kind of mentioned it, but why not a 32 or even upgrading to maybe even a 34? So I went with the 33 because it fit. Uh, again, I borrowed, I borrowed a friend of mine. It fit just right. It was a great fit. Filled up the wheel well in the back without going too much. Filled up the wheel well in the front without going too much. And then again, 2.5 liter engine. I don't have a lot of power to turn 35s, 34s over time. So if, if you look at it, you'll see the tent that's on top and then you add in the weight of the cooler, the ice, eventually the fridge, all the stuff that goes in there, recovery gear, the back end begins to drop a little bit and the, that, that space in the fender gets closer and closer and closer. And so if I was on a 35, I'd already have tracks worn into my tires from fender rub. Figure 33 is a good number. They come, they come stock much smaller. Uh, 31 looked okay but it looked like little baby tires. I didn't want baby tires. And then you talked a little bit about uh, how they drive. Um, you said that they were a little bit bigger, so obviously you have the 2.5, you need to keep it a little bit more on the lighter side. Did you notice it feeling any more sluggish with the new 33s compared to older tires? Oh yeah, so I went from a 31 to a 33, and I could tell there was a difference. It wasn't huge, but it's, it's, it's noticeable when you when you stop to pay attention to it and it's just it's for road noise very little change there's going to be road noise with the tire regardless it didn't go up a whole lot with this one like i said there's a little bit of reduced performance but nothing that i would that would sway me to go back to a smaller tire that's surprising for a mud tire so can you tell me a little bit more about why didn't you didn't go with an all-terrain you went with a mud terrain i didn't build this to be a daily driver i didn't build this to take it to the mall and take it shopping and go out and do stuff all the time so when i did this like this will be off-road this is going to be something to take outdoors i'm not going to drive this to somewhere far away on the freeway for extended periods of time so we're going to go with something off-road that's what it was designed for that's how i built it and that's just what it stuck with for an all-terrain it, it was an idea it was, it was a good thought built for a purpose and i kept it around there did you have to do anything to recalibrate or did you try to kind of gain any of that extra power back or you're just kind of enjoying the ride regardless so uh being an older vehicle i was i was concerned with having to recalibrate the uh the speedometer um i've got a garmin overlander gps inside that tracks your miles per hour so i look at the needle on the dashboard and i look over at my gps they match there was no need to change anything i'll hit 55 and i'll look over and i'll go 55 it's just barely off, so. Well, kind of getting away from the tires, let's get into the suspension. So you have, again, as a reminder, uh, the two and a half inch Rough Country lift kit with the Rubicon Express shocks. Can you tell me why you kept them? So I inherited the Rough Country lift. Uh, it came from the previous owner. So looked, started, you know, diving into the Rough Country website and found that this kit has these parts, that kit has, that kit has those parts. I started looking at stuff and I was like, okay, this is what I have. It says that the lift kit is fitted for a third 33 and it is it's it's been it's been phenomenal however add in the weight of the smitty built tent add in the weight of my yeti cooler add in the weight of my tools and recovery gear, the back end slowly begins to drop a little bit so with extensive off-roading when i say extensive with more travel that's having to go in and more articulation i actually have some real wheel rub with the 33s go to the rough country website it says you're good for 33s i was like okay i've also overloaded the jeep i've added a whole lot of stuff to it that's not a problem here in the near future I want to say probably in about the next two to three months before it gets cold, the four inch lift is going on. And uh, I did a lot of looking into that. I was I was thinking six, but then slip yoke eliminator is going to start coming into play. A whole lot more alignment's going to go real with And I'm like, I'm going to keep this one simple and easy. So I did. Now with the lift kit that you have, did you have any fitment issues as far as rubbing when you put the new wheels and tires on? I did not. So the only problem I had with rubbing was in was on the back stock fenders. And when I would turn and the vehicle would lean a little bit, you get that bah, 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 and that would be it. There was a little bit of rub with the stock, even with the two and a half inch lift, but it was only when, like I said, making turns on, on the daily. And again, I've also loaded it down with a lot of stuff. Yeah, and are you running upgraded fenders now with the 33s? Is that giving you any more um, room to work with compared to the stock ones? It's a whole lot of extra room. I, I went barricade, uh, front and barricade fenders front and back and I, I've had no problems with them since. And they've been phenomenal. Um, when opening and closing the tent, I, sometimes I gotta stand up on them to, to, to open up the rain flies and things. They can hold me and I'm not a delicate little guy, 
they can take any beating that they've given out there. It was, they, they were, they're a fantastic product that I swear up and down by. How do you like the way that it looks with the wheels, tires, and the suspension combined? Are you happy there or would you change anything? I know that you're looking at a four inch lift, but are you content with it now? I'm very content with it now. I like, this has been a step-by-step -step process. I've analyzed everything before I do it. And then I go, how is this going to incorporate with that? How are these going to incorporate with this over here? And there was a lot of a lot of moving parts and pieces that went into all this. And I love the way it's, that everything's turned out so far. Like you addressed, uh, it's gonna, it needs just a bigger lift. That's a fault of my own. I've put too much stuff on my Jeep. It's been an overall great build. I've loved the way that everything's turned out. Uh, it sits real nice. Uh, I, I get compliments with it on, all the time. Everybody seems to, to, to like it just like I do. How does the suspension perform with the wheels and tires when you're off-road? I wish I had something to complain about. I don't. They've been fantastic. I wanted to keep it within limitations that I knew it would still perform. I knew that it would still go right, and I did. I want to, like I said, I want to complain about it. It just, uh, through my own mental reservation, I want to uh, just be cool, keep calm, be able to drive it home. So I just want to give a recap on your build. Uh, so again, for everybody watching at home, Josh has the 1995 YJ Rio Grande, the 15 by seven inch US Racing Stealth Crawler steel wheels with a positive six millimeter offset, 33 by 11 inch Cooper Discover MTP tires, and the two and a half inch Rough Country lift with the Rubicon Express shocks. Again, thank you so much for joining with me today. And for more videos just like this, keep it right here at extremeterrain.com.